What's up you guys, it is Two Bricks, and today I have an interesting little short video for you guys which is a review of a mock that is not mine and is not made of Lego. This is actually from the company Medieval Brick. Um, that is a kind of an offshoot of the company that I was working with, Light Take, where uh, they produce their own bricks and they have uh, designers that they collaborate with to produce mocks and then they send you the bricks and you can build the kits. So. Uh, I am in the middle of an interesting transition period right now, which I am very, very excited to tell you guys more about in the coming weeks. Um, uh, but some very, very big things are happening over here at Two Ricks, so it's, uh, it's super exciting. Uh, I can't get into it too much right now because I don't want to spoil anything, but um, I'm going to be doing some shorter, quicker videos for you guys over the coming weeks to kind of get back into the swing of producing regular content. And um, then uh, we're going to kind of, uh, yeah, like I said, have some exciting things to talk about. Um, but today, uh, I'm just going to be showing you this mock, which was very kindly sent to me uh, for free uh, to review. And I'll give you my honest thoughts about it. And I'll tell you if I think that this is something that you guys should be interested in. So down in the video description, you can see all of the details about where this came from, uh, what kind of products they offer. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, dive in and give you guys a full overview of this mock, which again, I did not design the name of the designer and everything will be down below in the description. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's dive in and take a look at this thing. Oh, and just before we look at the set, I just wanted to show you guys, you can probably hear all of those pieces rattling around inside this box. This is the box that it came in with this uh, sort of, you know, <laughs> charming uh, inkjet printed uh, label that was stuck on here with an image of the set. I mean, hey, that's all you need. You know what's inside. Um, but I think that's really fun. Um, and then the box itself contains all of these extra pieces, which I'm so baffled to see. I mean, I guess um, they want to make sure you have everything, so they really load you up with extras. Um, but yeah, you can see they're one of the, the light take um, brand of um, brick separators and all of their spare bricks in there. So uh, yeah, that's absolutely crazy to me. Far beyond anything you'd expect to see in an official Lego set, of course. Um, but there you go. So you get a little bit of extra value and maybe you can do some customizing of your set uh, with those extra pieces. So there you go. All right, and here is the set itself. And you can see here it's obviously a sort of a pirate-inspired, uh, adventuresome kind of, um, you know, uh, island in the middle of uh, some Car uh, Caribbean paradise. And the rock formations happen to kind of evoke a skull and then this is where the smugglers or the pirates or the bandits have decided to make their uh, their little hideout which is really cool so i'm just giving you guys a full 360 look at it before we uh, take a look at what's inside so even though this is called uh, medieval mock i think it's basically like um you know historical uh, anything that's kind of to do with the past would probably fit into the theme pretty well because there's a lot of pirate uh, pirate related things on there which obviously is way, way after what we would consider to be medieval. But I think that's cool. You know, they're, um, maybe the, the translation from English isn't 100% the same. And uh, I get what they're going for. It's just historical adventure kind of mocks. So um, yeah, this is the set. It looks really nice. I think that the designer did an excellent job of evoking the uh, sort of pirate adventure feel. I really like the way that they've created the, d uh, the different kind of sand dunes and sand banks here that are um, coming out of the water. And it really has a nice organic feel to the way that that's all laid out. I really like the way that they've uh, done the kind of, you know, very jaggedy looking teeth on the, uh, the entrance of the cave there. It looks very menacing and foreboding. And the way they have that slant to the eye, uh, that's very, very cool. And then obviously the way that they've integrated the, the stairs and the little door going up there and the little balcony on the other side in amongst all of the nice foliage and palm trees and stuff. It's just super fun. It's a fun little mock. And this um, cannon here does actually work. So you can load up one of these um, you know cylinder bricks here that's included and you can shoot the cannon, shoot it into the mouth of the skull. Works great. And uh, it has its own little um, kind of emplacement here where the the pirates could defend their turf against some uh, invading forces, which I think is really fun. Um, so yeah, with that look at the exterior of the mock, let's open this up and see some of the things we can see on the inside. Um, oh, one thing I just wanted to quickly mention, um, the instructions will call for several uh, printed elements, but um, this company uh, does not have the ability to produce printed elements, so uh, all of the things uh, are blank. Um, so, you know, you just have to kind of look at what is intended to be in that specific spot 
and um, yeah, there won't be a print for that. So there's like a map on the inside that's just plain, and you know that's just kind of one of the drawbacks of um, of using third-party non-Lego bricks. So um, yeah, let's open this up and take a look on the inside. All right, so the first thing that can open up here is we can open up this whole back door section of the um, the whole kind of cave itself. The door swings open here. Um, it is unfortunate that this uh, cheese wedge is um, called for in the instructions to be right here, but if you remove it, the door actually has a much wider angle of you know where it can open, and I actually like that much better. And I'm just gonna, for you know, for my model, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this particular cheese wedge off to the side, and uh, that'll be fine. Um, and then yeah, it just closes up here with uh, a tile to indicate where the water line is, and you can place your boat in there. I mean, you can place the boat from the front too, but it's just a convenient way to get it out. And maybe it can be the front entrance is kind of the main where you'd expect the boat with all the goodies to come in. And then if the pirates are under attack, they can go out the sneaky back exit there and make a quick getaway. So I think that's really fun. Um, so then we can open up the door along the side here, just to reposition a little bit. Um, so this door also opens up and it's a little bit stiff. Uh, again, the angle um, that you can get on it as far as uh, how far it can open isn't the greatest. But it can open up to about, I don't know, 70 degrees, uh, which is you know, respectable enough. You can definitely fit a figure like they're standing in the doorway there, which is, um, which is what you want to see, so that's fine. And then lastly, this whole top dome section here of the skeleton or the skull comes off. Um, there was actually an error in the, um, in the design of this where uh, there's an extra plate that is marked off on the back of this that is a one by four plate that actually would be sitting where this tile is. So I just went ahead and removed that um, and it works just fine. It's just one of those things that I am actually, uh, I've done the same thing many times on my own uh, instructions where I, I won't realize that two parts are actually intersecting and then um, I don't have the collision warning turned on. So then I just miss that part and it kind of gets, um, you have plates that are sitting inside of one another's space. So it's totally forgivable, and again, one of those things that doesn't impact the design in any way. You just take that plate off, and you're good to go. Uh, so let me show you the inside of the Pirates Hideout. All right, so here's a look in from the top view. So you can see there, there is a hole off to the left side where the pirates can climb down into the cave uh, or climb up from the cave when they've gotten off of their boat. And there's a little uh, rifle and a torch off to the side there. Then we have the main area here with the table where uh, I guess the pirates would meet and do their scheming and they can look out through the eyes of the skull and uh, kind of plan their next, um, you know, their next mission. So that's really fun. I like the bottle here, the inclusion of the goblet and the fresh turkey leg that looks, um, <laughs> looks juicy for pirates who are hungry after some, uh, some pirating to come back and uh, yeah, get some libations. Um, and yeah, this was the, the thing that I was mentioning is uh, meant to be a map, but in fact, it's just a blank tile. And again, it's one of those things, hey, maybe the pirates used invisible ink, who knows? But um, yeah, it is just one of those unfortunate side effects of cheaper uh, non-Lego compatible bricks. So it just can't be helped, I guess. Um, I'll talk about the, uh, the specific quality of the bricks and some issues that I did run into after the overall review here is done. But uh, obviously you can see here some, uh, again, like with the, um, the Nubu Starfighter uh, or the Nubu Royal Starship mock that I reviewed, the, um, the coloration of the bricks here uh, can be quite different from one to the next. And that is just a byproduct of the fact that they use multiple manufacturers um, and sometimes they just get different coloration on the bricks and it's just, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, so yeah, looking down in here, uh, there's not a ton to see. There's a little indication here of the ladder that the pirates would use to climb up to, uh, yeah, up into the cave. And then on the other side, there's a tiny little kind of uh, dock with a barrel on it. Uh, there's nothing in the barrel. Um, uh, well, there's an indication of what could pos uh, potentially be gunpowder maybe. There's just some black studs that are kind of on the inside of the lid there and another torch. Uh, the, the area down here, unfortunately, is not that accessible or play. It's hard to get your hands in there to really use the space. It's more for just parking your boat and pretending that the pirates are, are, are dismounting and, and going up. Um, but I think it's nice that they did include some detail in there. And I think that the effect overall of the skull and of the whole set is really, really nice. So I'm, uh, I'm definitely a big fan of this one. I mean, I was given uh, a list of mocks that I could choose from to review. 
and I thought that this one looked absolutely super cool, so this is the one that I chose, and I'm very happy with it. I think that I'm, uh, I'm going to enjoy having this off somewhere on the side on a shelf. Um, so yeah, let's get into some of the quality issues and things that I discovered while building this mock. So to start with, uh, the feel of the bricks uh, is about what I'd expect from a Chinese Lego compatible uh, non-brick, uh, non-official Lego building system. You guys know what I'm trying to say. Um, the, the bricks don't have the exact sort of um, tensioning that you'd expect from Lego. So some of the bricks go down really hard, some of them go down a little too easy. Um, the only real example of something that just simply would not stick in place is this plant right here. So uh, what I had to do, the clutch power on the actual um, you know, studded base or the, the anti-studs under here is simply not enough. It, it just wants to fall off as soon as I breathe on it. So um, what I did to get around that is I just attached a stud to the central hole here, which actually is decently strong. And since I have all of those extra parts, I thought I'll just go ahead and use one of those. And then I can attach that to the studded base and it um, clutches just fine. Um, other than that, the, the, the palm trees and things are all A-OK. -okay, um, and I haven't had any problems with like these smaller parts wanting to come off too easily, so that's nice. Um, but there is a problem with, uh, I think it's called biting, where the plastic, um, when you insert a, it seems to particularly be with cone pieces, uh, a cone piece into a, um, a bar, the, the plastic just locks up and it just does not want to let go. So I can get that, that top one off, there's no problem, but this bottom one just doesn't want to let go. And there was actually um, several spots in the instructions that called for, like for example on this door hinge, it called for inserting a cone into a bar, and once it's on, it does not come off. So that is something that, like, I mean, I would have to get a, a pair of pliers to remove these. Um, so that is one major quality issue that I think is just a materials thing, or it's just a tolerance thing um, with, you know, either with the cone piece or with the bar pieces just being a little too maybe thick by ever so much that they just get wedged in there. I don't know exactly, uh, but that is an issue that I have noticed across the board with these particular brick manufacturers. That is um, an issue and it's something to keep in mind. Um, so kind of with, with this set, I'm thinking that once I put it together, I'm not going to take it apart. It is, um, it is you know, hard on the fingers to, to build one of these sets. You have to really um, mash down the larger plates with a lot of force and, and in multiple areas to get them to lay flat. Um, so I'm not going to be taking this apart and just that's something to keep in mind going in if you're going to purchase one of these. It really is more of a build one time display type of a deal. Uh, and I think if you look at it that way, you're going to have a much happier time with this. If you're not expecting this to just mix in with your regu uh, regular Lego collection and be able to reuse these parts as if they're regular Lego bricks, they are compatible, um, but it doesn't really work that way. So. Um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. But other than that, uh, I didn't have any issues. I clearly I was able to build the thing. Um, the Technic uh, pins and um, the little Technic I don't know what you call these things. Uh, these uh, these Technic lift arm pieces, I guess. Uh, I had some issues with those on the previous model that I built from Light Take, but these actually were uh, went together just fine. So. There's no issues with the palm trees or anything. And they're actually, because of the clutch power on these, they're actually very, very solid and wouldn't fall off as easily as they would if they were Lego. These would be super annoying <laughs> to have around if they were Lego, because you would just be knocking them off constantly. So that's actually one upside to the um, to the style of these bricks that, uh, that is good. Um, so yeah, the only other issue really is um, minor design differences that the, uh, the designer of the set when working with Lego wouldn't necessarily take into account. So an example of that is like the the design of these particular bricks. These are the um, the one by one um, bracket pieces here. Uh, so Lego has these in their inventory, and there is only enough space on the bottom of this piece from Lego to plug it into a stud right there, right? But on the light take design, or on the whichever company they're using to produce these pieces, there's this additional gap under here. That means that when you place it onto a stud, it can sort of slide forward and back. It's kind of hard to, um, to show you guys, but you can kind of see it here. So this actually has the ability to wiggle forward and back like that, right? So for something like this, the teeth that are kind of placed in with all of uh, using all of these bracket pieces have the ability to wiggle forward and back 
each one of them is kind of not secured in place. So the designer wasn't definitely wasn't intending for that to be the case. And so there can be instances where things like that, where the, the parts are designed differently, can lead to errors and issues where um, something that the designer intended isn't really possible. And another example of that is the bar issue that I was seeing up here. Um, I actually broke a bar. Um, luckily, I had a spare. But I actually broke one trying to remove the cone from it. So um, that's something that you have to keep in mind as well, is that there could be um, there is the potential for connections and things that are expected to work that will not work with the actual parts that you physically receive. So um, that and the color matching issues, which aren't too terrible on this one. Um, I really mainly noticed it on these tiles up at the top. And there's some minor variation in the, the dark grays throughout, but it's actually, it's actually fairly OK. The tiles seem to be the, the biggest culprit. Um, but other than that, the color matching is pretty decent. And um, like I said, I had a good time building this set. And I think that the designer did a great job. And uh, the parts uh, mostly work for what they're intended to do. So this is a fun little piece. Uh, thank you to Medieval uh, Bricks for sending it to me and for allowing me to give my honest thoughts about the product. I never ever want to uh, have anyone believe that me getting sent something for free is going to influence my opinion on it, because it will not. I'll always tell you guys exactly what I think of a product. So. There you go. Uh, that's that set. Again, please do stay tuned over the coming weeks for the very, very exciting announcements about the channel, uh, because big, big things are happening. Big LEGO-related things, I should say. And um, yeah, I'm just really, really excited for the future of this channel. So this is the first of many new videos to come in the, uh, the coming weeks that are kind of a gap filler as I get ready um, for the next phase of the Two Bricks. Uh, brand, I guess. <laughs> I don't really like to think of it as that, but yeah, the, the Two Bricks channel. Um, so yeah, thank you guys again for sticking with me and for continuing to like and subscribe as you have been doing. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to check down in the description if you're interested for the uh, info about this mock, okay? All right, guys, thank you very much. I'll see you on the next video, and bye for now.